Hey knitters, Marla back here again. All right, it's time to cast on. I hope you got all of your supplies. I am usually a wool purist. I love working with wool, but I have this great leftover pink yarn from when I made my pussy hat back in January. And it is this Lion Brand chunky, what's it, what's it? I don't even remember and I don't have the label anymore, but I wanted to use something you guys could see really well when I'm um, made my mittens and I wanted mittens to match my pussy hat because I'm gonna wear it again this this winter so anyway <laughs> so I'm gonna be making my mittens out of this bright lovely pink yarn here I hope you guys are ready to cast on I'm gonna go grab my needles and I'll see you soon all right guys so these are the materials we need to get started today we've got our hundred grams of chunky weight yarn and then we've got our four size us 10 double pointed knitting needles and we're going to use a long tail cast on today so i'm going to make a long tail of yarn off of my um, ball here and we're going to need to cast on 28 stitches and i'll show you the long tail cast on you're going to want to get set up by having the tail of the yarn draped over your thumb and the yarn that's connected to the ball draped over your forefinger so and then you're going to have this nice little spot here that's where we're going to start and just insert the needle that you're working with underneath the yarn between your thumb and forefinger and then hold it down lightly with the top of your other index finger and then we're going to turn hand upside down a little bit here and we're going to hold while holding on to that hit the tip of the needle underneath the loop on the thumb and then underneath that inside loop on the forefinger and then pull it back through the thumb and then tighten it up with by pulling on the yarn gently don't pull too tight because it's possible to make a really tight long tail cast on and then that's not going to be comfortable squeezing around your wrist so you want to pull it tight but not like squeeze the life out of it if you can help it on the outside loop go through the outside loop on the thumb the inside loop on the forefinger and then pull it back through the thumb so outside inside and then right back through outside inside right back through so you can see we've got five good stitches going there we're going to keep going until we have 28 Alright, now that we have all 28 stitches onto one needle, we are going to transfer them over to the other two needles. We're going to spread these stitches out so that they are evenly distributed over three needles. Now, evenly distributed is a funny way to put it when I'm going to tell you to put, it, put them on really strange order. So we have 28 stitches, but I want to give you guys the uh, best tip to success that I can. So we are going to distribute them um, so that we have eight stitches on needles one and two and 12 stitches on needles three. And I'll show you guys why in just a second. So the, this part's pretty simple, but it can be a little bit scary. We're just going to slowly transfer pearl-wise the stitches from one needle to the next. So we've got needle one going on right now. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've got eight stitches on needle one and we're gonna do something a little bit scary. Um, we're gonna just let it hang there. The fabric should be strong enough that you can just let it hang if your cast on isn't too loose. Um, if your cast on's too tight, you're gonna have a really hard time transferring those stitches over. So if you're a little bit afraid of doing this, you can always hold it up between your uh, forefinger and your middle finger, but we're just going to let it hang and be courageous today. All right, so then we're going to bring in a third needle into the mix and transfer another eight stitches over onto that. So one, two, four, six, seven, eight. All right, so we've got, look at that. Three needles full of stitches and we're going to now rotate them so that the one that has the working yarn 
is at the end. And we're going to do this very carefully so that we don't twist any of the stitches. You can see right now that all the stitches are in a nice row. So what I do is I just flip them over like that and then grab them and slightly rotate them so that we have the first stitches that we slipped onto the needle are at the front. That's going to be needle one. And this is needle two and needle three is going to be the one that has the working yarn to start in your little cast on tail. And this is where we bring the fourth needle into the mix. If you're feeling a little bit nervous or you're not sure about the stability of your needles, you can always lay them down on the table and start knitting like this. If you're feeling a little bit more courageous and you want to hold it, I always hold it um, so that I've got a finger on each oops, a finger on each needle. So I've got my you can see I've got my thumb on needle one, my forefinger on needle three, and needle two's held between those other two fingers there. So we're gonna switch stick. We're gonna just go ahead and um, hold those stable. Slide your needle into that first stitch. Bring the yarn around to knit. Pull it, you're going to want to pull it a little bit tight just so because you're connecting those two needles. And then just knit those first two stitches. So we are going to go ahead and do a knit two, purl two rib around. However, my pro tip for if you're a little bit nervous and you're um, afraid of the stability of your yarn, that first trip around and you just don't want anything to be too wobbly, um, just go ahead and knit that first round. No one's going to ever know. It's going to be your secret and my secret and you're going to feel really great about your ability to knit with double pointed needles. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and do the rib, but if you want to do that knit first round, go for it. So the reason why I'm having you split your stitches up this way is so that you end every needle with the purl part of the rib. And that is so you can begin every uh, begin every needle with the knit part of the rib. I find that that helps make your fabric just a little bit more stable. So we're moving here to the second needle there. We're just switching needles. We're pretending those other two needles don't exist. And we're starting with the knit part of the rib so that it just gives us a little bit more stability of that fabric between the needles. And we're going to keep knitting and purling. So see we're ending this second needle with two purl stitches. And then we're going to move on to that third needle. Make sure your tail's not all tangled. And knit, pur knit two, purl two our way across. And I tend to guide my way by just noting where my tail is. That way I know I've come to the end of the round. You can see a little bit of a gap there. That will close up as we keep moving. And we can tie in a little bit at the end. So there we have our very first round, knit purl around. That's going to start our cuff. We're going to keep going with this for another two inches. That'll give us a nice, good, solid cuff on the bottom of our mitten. All right, so now that we have a good two inches of fabric on our needles, we are ready to start the cuff. Um, so you need to have ended with needle three and be ready to start on needle one. So you're going to have your tail should be right here on um, the hanging right between the first needle and the last needle. And you know it's needle three because it's got the 12 stitches on it. So we are going to meet up next time. You'll need two stitch markers that are going to fit with your size US 10 needles. And then we will learn how to increase for the thumb gusset and at the same time knit up your hand a little bit. So I will see you guys next time. I'm really excited to keep going. I hope you're having fun. If you have any questions, um, please leave comments on the blog or down below the video. And I will do my best to help you guys troubleshoot. 
Ah, see you next time.